Yeah. It's like clockwork. That is. Clockwork. That <laughs> is. Yeah. Cl- <laughs> Everybody immediately. Who's you know about <laughs> Lemon's habit? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no, I, I, I. <laughs> his. It, it might even be just a tick, not even habit. No, like, it's true. Like, yeah, I can, like I consider myself a bit of an enabler. <laughs> Uh, you I don't know, I want to make one of those sites that's just text, like the, the URL is just, is Lemon making a new domain and, the, and on, on the page the text is just yes. Yeah. <laughs> like one of those kind of sites. It could be, is is Lemon making a new doma.india? This is a crucially important message, and it is also terrible things read with enthusiasm. In the room tonight, we have Boots Rain Gear. Fox McCloud is the leader of the Star Fox team, and his piloting prowess is unmatched. He is a far better pilot than any Star Wars pilot in the Star Wars universe. Yes, Fahan? The characters of Titan AE are underdeveloped and could have used a longer movie to develop. John Toast. The 1998 song release, Believe by Cher, sums up my oh, move dear. of my breakup with Star Wars beautifully, since I must also believe in myself. <laughs> Frank West. <laughs> <laughs> Our document provider and guest for the evening, this is Chiefskate. I had a Star Wars phase in 1996, and yes, during the ATPF period. And Lemon. Believe me, I tried to enjoy and or be inclusive about Star Wars many times in my life, and it only ended in disaster each time! <laughs> Clearly. There's some people that you shouldn't associate with. Yeah, plus. Hey, hey lemon. 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 Oh my God! Wow. Hi, <laughs> lemon. <laughs> Just uh, give me a minute. <laughs> Let me be in my personal <laughs> space. That <laughs> was a little overwhelming. Initiated anyway. conversation. No, I did. I did. You're right. Uh, how are we all doing tonight? Same. I'm doing great. Yeah. Swell. Cheapskate. It seems like you're not doing so great. Why is that? Well, I found myself uh, thinking yeah. about a movie I saw the other day uh, that really got me down. A movie that you saw. Okay, and then and then so you saw the movie. I'm assuming you didn't like the movie, right? Is that is that? Oh accurate? well, I, yeah. You know, uh, I thought the movie was a little bit over my head. You know, uh, it was called uh, Titan AE. Have you guys seen it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have. sure have. have not. <laughs> I have seen that movie. Yes. Well, the the, the most seated on the shelves. The most uh, the most important thing to do um, when uh, you see a movie uh, that you don't like is devote your life to complaining about it on Tumblr. <laughs> yeah. That's what um, I've done. To that end, uh, this is a document given to us by somebody by the name of Cheapskate, um, and uh, it is uh, it is called Thermodynamic Martinets and Jar Jar Breasts. Um, Cheapskate, am I right in thinking that this is all uh, the work of one man? It is. Uh, it's one guy who's got both a DVR page, uh, Sagan Fan nineteen eighty three, and a blogspot page called Project Orion Two Interstellar. Uh, all the same dude, um, okay. who also has opinions about uh, Titan AE Fantastic. and and Star Wars and other things. Okay, well, uh, and breasts. Uh... <laughs> impressed. Um, <laughs> Isfahan, if you'll start us off, please. Uh, we are going okay. to be going to. Ooh, we're going to be going to saganfan1983.deviantart.com. I already saw this picture, but it's so good. Slash art slash. I hate <laughs> Titan AE. Um, Ooh, oh. it's asking me to confirm my age. This is a good yeah, sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a. a oh, woman, I wish I hadn't confirmed my age now. A woman <laughs> with a duster jacket that's made out of her own breast. <laughs> that's holding up a sign that says Titan AE is indecent, and she does have four nipples. Thank you for asking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so, Isfahan, uh, why don't you uh, take us through this, please? Okay, this is a countdown list of why I hate Titan AE. Well, I mentioned the picture, so can I just can I describe the picture that that is attached to this wall of text? I think you should. Okay, it's it's some sort of lizard creature. 
mm-hmm. with breasts that have two nipples each and wings on the breasts, and it's mm-hmm. made of clay, and it's holding a sign saying, Titan AE is indecent, and the <laughs> is has the Star Trek logo next to it. <laughs> on either side of it. Yeah, it's, it's sandwiched <laughs> between Star Trek yeah. logos, <laughs> Star Trek insignias. Uh, also, like, like the things hanging from her breasts uh, just kind of look like like, like plasticine elk antlers. Yeah, 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 I don't know what they're supposed to be. Anyway, uh, it's fun. If you'll start us off, please. Okay, so I'm reading why I hate Titan A.E. T to death. Yes. Uh, point number one, this movie has a spaceship blow up planet Earth for silly reasons as its premise. Mm-hmm. I have heard the argument that if an alien species were so afraid that we would wipe them out, that they would strike first. But that misses my point. The opening narration of the movie made it clear that the Titan project was what the dredge feared most and that the Titan brought the dredge upon us without any warning or mercy. The dredge, who are up until the climax of the movie touted as invincible, destroy our planet because all because all they I'm sorry, destroy our planet all because they fear what we would supposedly become if we create planets that makes no shred of sense whatsoever. It's like like they made this movie for children. Yeah, if this would be awful if, you know, wars in real life ever happened for ridiculous reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Which is clearly not the case. Well, I don't know. I, a, I, don't, I don't like those people. That's why. Well, as a side note, that may sound off topic. Yeah. My foster parents both disliked the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for having people get cut up in it. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> they never saw that coming. Away huh? from if you don't like pe- watching people get cut up. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 picked up the VHS. They saw the words the Texas, and they were like, "Oh, I love Texas!" And they stopped reading the title. Yeah. I thought this was a safety uh, video about chainsaws. It turns out they're yeah. using them completely the wrong way. The Texas Chainsaw Mass Acre. They had a lot of different acres of land that they were going to clear with their chainsaw, but no. I mean, there was a farm. You know, they were close. <laughs> oh, I thought it said the Texas Chinese manicure. <laughs> They, a heartwarming tale. <laughs> they do not like to see people being cut up, and that is a legitimate and valid reason to dislike the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I agree. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. If you don't like to see people getting cut up, I would recommend you give that movie a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Love porn, hate the penetration. I have heard. S- yeah. <laughs> I have heard some nincompoops tell me that a spaceship oh. blowing up Earth for no good reason in Titan AE is a stupid and silly reason for me to hate Titan AE. By that line of reasoning and that piss poor logic, people getting cut up in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a stupid and silly reason for the Heblers to dislike the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Don't you see how asinine that is? Wow. Uh, man, you just like tied me up in a neat little bow with your logic like I can't move I'm just I'm just swaddled in this blanket <laughs> yeah I don't like this movie why because I don't like the plot of the movie <laughs> but newsflash <laughs> the pointless military destruction of earth and Titan AE is a legitimate and valid reason to hate Titan AE no yes you you uh... how, do you make a, how do you make a straw man so small <laughs> <laughs> Um, you you uh, you have uh, many a bunch of bunch more opinions about Titan A, but why don't we uh, sure just do. finish it up here with the uh, conclusion, please? Okay, let's let's cut to the chase here. Titan Thank A.E. You. is an insult to space science, astronomy, space exploration, and hope for the future. <laughs> <laughs> Titan gotcha. A.E. has been so illogical, so abysmal, so poisonous, so uh-huh. terrible that it has truly earned my wrath. Titan A.E. has absolutely no heft or reality at all. I call any fruit that kills you instantly, even if you just taste it, a Titan A.E. fruit. (laughs) (laughs) How many of these fruits exist? (laughs) No, fuck you, video game. That was a Titan A.E. fruit. (laughs) Now... I, I'm not looking this up, so I think any fruit that kills you instantly, even if you just taste it, I think that fruit's called poison. Yeah. No, it's called a Titan A.E. Oh, yeah. oh that, I'm right. Sorry, my mistake. That's the sickest <laughs> burn ever. All the, all the stuff under my sink, instead of those Mr. Yuck stickers, I, I just put pictures of uh, Bill Pullman's character from Titan A.E. on them. 
<laughs> okay, I'm searching Urban Dictionary for Titan AE fruit. <laughs> I'm sure it's in there. Uh, then there's a, 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 a digression about Star Trek, but we'll just, mm-hmm. you know, know that it's in there and that's fine. Probably the only one we're going to find. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming. The only one we're going to find. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, Lemon, you might want to put an edit point there uh, just because... The person editing this, they just want to clip you saying there's a long discretion about Star Trek, and I think they'll just want to copy and paste that through the rest of the recording. <laughs> I think that's going to come up again. I just, wanted, I just wanted to put that in there for the future Star Trek. <laughs> Actually, Esfalan, can you read the, the section immediately after Star Trek, colon? Had Gene Roddenberry been alive to see Titan AE, he would not have liked it one bit. I do know that Star Trek is not all happiness and that Star Trek deals with ster- serious stuff a lot of the time. Ooh, cool. I know that Star Trek contains planet-busting super weapons like the Bugle snack-shaped doomsday machine. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was a word for the shape that that doomsday machine was in. I guess it's got to be Bugles. But specifically the Bugle snack. Yeah, the yeah, Bugles. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. the, it's, not it's, the it's, instrument. It's got, all, it's got all those ridges and it's kind of bent because... It didn't process it right at the factory. <laughs> but Star Trek still emphasizes hope for the future and life being better in the future. I can still like Planet Buster clad Star Trek episodes like The Doomsday Machine in from the original series and yeah. take and hate Titan AE at the same time and no, that is okay. You cannot, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like debating nobody on this. <laughs> yeah. Julene likes Star Wars, yet she at the same time disliked the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and that was fine. It's like they were two completely different movies. <laughs> like you need to shit or get off the pot with Bill liking both Star Wars and Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. thing. The Texas Lightsaber Massacre. Yeah. That's why they that's why they share conventions, you know. Yeah. So, um uh John Toast. Yes. Do you think you could tell me about your deepest childhood regrets? That's joining this podcast, but I see you also have something to read here. <laughs> you didn't join this podcast uh, in your childhood, sir. <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah, I was going to say, it just feels that, that way. That is libel. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about my g- deepest childhood regret. Okay. This deviation is about a dark chapter in my personal history that lasted for 706 days, which I now regret. <laughs> it's a long deviation. All right. deep, deep, deep number one. Deep chapter. What I am about to say is 100% true, and I am not making even a shred of this up. Okay. For more than two decades, from May 25th, 1990, until early Ju- July 2010, I lived with foster parents going by the name of Hebler. And then, oh, okay. My foster mom and guardian, his name, died in the Hospital of Complications on April 30th, 2009, and her husband and my foster dad, Bob, is now a widower. Gotcha. They have a biological daughter named and a biological son named Okay, then it just yep. goes through. Yeah. Okay. The p- yep. personal information yeah, about these nice people. Yeah, yeah you're We're just narrating gonna... the family tree at this point. Probably going to have to like beep all this out anyway, so just <laughs> for the rest for like it's two chapters, for two paragraphs here. This is important backstory. <laughs> Okay, so let, so yes, <laughs> we might have to cut some of that. All right, all right. Basically, uh, family stuff happens. In 1994, I was anticipating and did enjoy The Lion King when it first came in theaters. Mm-hmm. And I have always had movies that I like much better than The Lion King, starting with Star Trek, the, anime, the original series movies. <laughs> the Lion King was never my favorite movie, and it never will be my favorite movie. Okay. Okay. Sure, that's fine. I Go. say good day, Timon and Booba. <laughs> <laughs> However, Hakuna Matata to you. <laughs> How dare you. However, I was fated to become my own worst enemy regarding Lion King in the late fall of the following year, 1995. In 1994 and 1995, I was already aware of the issue regarding endangered species, and I was already vehement about poaching and whaling by then, and I was 10 or 11 years old at the time. I knew... Yeah, that's it. ...that various whale species and panda bears were endangered species on the brink of extinction, and thus had very strong feelings about it. In the morning of Saturday, April 26, 1995, I was watching Saturday morning cartoons on CBS with a couple foster brothers and their names. 
During the commercial breaks, there was an advertisement for a then brand new set of Saturday morning cartoons on CBS set to premiere on September 16th of that year. The commercial I am talking about was an advertisement for multiple cartoon shows, including the Mask Animated Series and the Lion King Timon and Pumbaa show. Uh, I visually misinterpreted two clips of the Timon and Pumbaa show. <laughs> the first of those two clips showed Pumbaa jumping off of a wall, screaming as he plummeted. The second clip had Timon standing on a panda bear's butt, with a panda's head apparently on the ground, and Timon was screaming in that clip. <laughs> okay. Okay. I thought that I saw Timon and Pumbaa pound the panda into the ground headfirst in order to suffocate it. <laughs> In another words, I thought that Tabone and Pumbaa were killing the panda bear. Mm-hmm. How when- could you? <laughs> How could you think such terrible thoughts of a beloved character, Timon and Pumbaa? You know, I've, I've had regrets in my life, but nothing compared to this. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's, that's why that's his deepest childhood regret. <laughs> it really gives you perspective, doesn't it? When this misinterpretation occurred, I started to hate the characters of Timon and Pumbaa, and anti-Timon and Pumbaa fanaticism, or ATPF, <laughs> began. <laughs> oh God, this uh, this that took a minute to build to, but <laughs> hey, uh, glad we're hey, here. Hey, hey Lemon, yeah, <laughs> good. Slight suggestion for an F Plus Live Six uh, shirt design. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what would you like? What would you like? Uh, just hmm. the ATPF uh, coalition. <laughs> oh, finally! More members! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they had to disband the original faction because it got to be so popular. You know, he didn't have room in his house for all the mail he was receiving. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought that Timon and Pumbaa switched from being the good guys that they are in the Lion King movie to being bad guys in the Timon and Pumbaa show as a result of that misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know the, the dark the dark turn that Saturday morning cartoons take mm-hmm. <laughs> when yeah. they first come out? The Timon and Pumbaa made their heel turn. They came out and they hit Simba over the head with a steel chair. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe what I'm seeing! And then, By and then God, they, that lion has a family! <laughs> and, they, and they called the audience a bunch of idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Minutes or so after that interpretation, um, I think it's Foster Mother, told me that they were saving the panda, but I did not believe her. After that, we went on a weekly swim practice for the Special Olympics at the Jewish Community Center, JCC, and then after that swim practice, I was grounded for the rest of the day for that misinterpretation. <laughs> wow. What? What? Huh. Wait, what? <laughs> what? I, that is a... <laughs> I think you're remembering Ooh. that wrong. <laughs> I think the grounding is probably related to his uh, misinterpretation. <laughs> yes, agreed. I hope so. <laughs> is this is this because I thought that Simone and Timber were attacking that panda? Yeah, no, of course. Yep, that's what it's about. Yes, <laughs> just just fucking stay in there. God damn it. I knew that's what it was about. <laughs> this panda misinterpretation that I had discussed is not intrinsic and was purely circumstantial. I approached the Timon, Puma, and Pandas thing form an angle that was not at all obvious from a visual standpoint. Mm-hmm. I was going by two clips in a commercial for multiple cartoon shows instead of an actual show or movie. Mm-hmm. I knew that Timon and Pumbaa were good in the Lion King motion picture since it was so obvious, and I had watched the actual Timon and Pumbaa show and actual panda episode. I would have known in advance that Timon and Pumbaa were saving the pandas. It would have been obvious. The name of the TMP episode of the pandas is Don't Break the China. <laughs> okay, well, you know, we'll get Dozer Fleet to look it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that Bob were to record Don't Break the China when the episode first premiered on CBS and show it to me. And had Bob recorded that episode and showed it to me, I would have changed my opinion and have accepted the truth that Timon and Pumbaa were saving the pandas, <laughs> and I wouldn't, and it would have ended ATPF <laughs> before Toy Story first opened in theaters. So oh, he, a, I mean, when Toy he Story didn't even watch the, the the episode that... <laughs> That clip was from. Yeah, he's no, wishing I, I that mean... Bob would sit him down like in a clockwork orange and force him to watch it. <laughs> no, I don't want to watch Timon and Pumbaa do bad things. <laughs> I oh. I mean, just just think what a different world we would live in if AT- ATPF had been disbanded. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, if we if we if it hadn't gone on to be the cultural force that it has been. Maybe <laughs> Timon and Pumbaa would still history. be on the air today. <laughs> Uh, Frank West. That's me. I've got a choice for you. 
I'm scared of choices. Well, then, you know, uh, you'll have to figure out some way to make this choice. So here we go. Uh, your choice is you can either read for us all. Red Letter Media is indecent. That one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Okay. Well, what's the other choice? <laughs> I need other, to know. <laughs> the other one was, oh, God damn it. I just had to do a control F on Star Wars and now. Whoops. <laughs> 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 74 instances of, the story <laughs> of Star Wars. <laughs> uh, the other option So what's is, the other choice, Lemon? The other option is why I fear Star Wars. I'm going to go with Red Letter Media. Red Letter Media. Okay, so uh, if you will uh, tell me why Red Letter Media is indecent. Red Letter Media is indecent. And the picture... It's the same picture from the first thing we read. Only now he's holding up a sign that says Red Letter Media is easy. He's getting his money's worth out of that uh, whole <laughs> tit monster holding up the sign thing. He spent a month modeling that. <laughs> <laughs> its toes Best. matched its breasts. <laughs> yeah. Best money I ever spent on oh, Fiverr. For, for reference, for the two people who don't know, Red Letter Media is... A, they did a review of the Star Wars prequels and they were not kind to them yeah, so letter- if you got four hours to spare uh check those out yeah yeah, yeah just want to yeah. give a big shout out to our sponsors this month red letter media again they support <laughs> everything that we read uh they 100 percent agree with everything we do yeah red letter <laughs> media is the warby parker of lisa mattresses <laughs> <laughs> stamps.com Red Letter Media is horrible. Yeah. It is the very reason why the Star Wars fan base is still divided to this day. <laughs> oh, so Red Letter Media is the Fort Sumter of the Star Wars fan base, I guess. Gotcha. People yeah. never argued about Star Wars before the prequels, <laughs> for yeah. the prequel reviews. Yeah. Chicken fat or egg. Brother, Chicken or egg. Fat brother fighting against fat brother. <laughs> I am not a huge star... <laughs> I am not a huge Star Wars fan myself, and me personally, I like Star Trek much better. Okay. However, I cannot stand for the incessant online harassment and cyberbullying against Star Wars prequel fans. And... Both of those Those are just links to its own page. No, it's a different page that's also... No, it's the same page. (laughs) 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 He cited the same page as his source. (laughs) (laughs) Michael Stokes. Stoklasa. Stoklasa and his followers harass and bully certain other people for no other reason than they just so happen to enjoy the Star Wars prequels. Mm -hmm. And that is why I am against Red Letter Media. I have no problem if Mr. Harry S. Plinkett dislikes the Star Wars prequels. However, that does not change the fact that Plinkett's reviews of the Star Wars prequels are full of lies, falsehoods, logical fallacies, double standards, bullying, etc. Do you think he thinks Plinkett is a real person? Yes, 100% he does. And he never he, he never mailed me those pizza rolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I posted a comment called, on his web zone. It's not even called a web zone. Uh, and then just uh, skip down. One of the place. worst things that were pointed out in that article is how people like a Patton Oswald can say they want to kill George Lucas with a shovel and still get treated like a hero. I am not making this up. The aforementioned psychopath is obviously sick in the head and needs to be locked up in a mental hospital. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Definitely. Yes, I think somebody should alert the authorities on somebody in your story. (laughs) (laughs) The Star Wars prequels are now being censored by the mainstream media at events like Celebration (laughs) Anaheim and the San Diego Comic Con. You have to go to InfoWars to see the real thing. (laughs) The Big Bang Theory and TMZ have also joined the OT only purest craze. Oh, so when you mean censored, you mean people aren't watching them. Is what you mean. No, I, I like the idea of just like Obi Wan talking to Boss Nass and just like getting bleeped in his mouth, a black bar of his mouth, like he's just cussing him out. All the fucking upskirt shots. 
Since I live in San Diego, I will boycott the San Diego Comic Con as long as they pander to the Star Wars nostalgic purists. I will refuse to watch the Big Bang Theory. I can't get through that. That's the (laughs) weird. Okay. Okay. Yeah, both the San Diego Comic Con and the Big Bang Theory are just hanging on by a thread, and you're gonna (laughs) be the you're gonna be the the straw that broke the camel's back. What's Saga After- fan saying? Oh, fuck! <laughs> You'll lead the entire anti Timon and Puma faction on a walkout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After reading that fractured fandom article, I will not celebrate May the 4th because of those nostalgic purist bullies and instead celebrate Star Trek Day on April 5th and Star Wars Prequel Appreciation Day on May 19th. A real date that I'm sure thing people <laughs> celebrate. Oh yeah, you know what they say fake it till you make it. <laughs> this violent hate craze against the Star Wars prequels needs to stop. It is highly toxic, just like Titan A.E. Oh, callback. <laughs> <laughs> the OT only purists need to learn to leave the SW prequel fans in place, whether they like it or not. The owner of this deviation has disabled comments. <laughs> <laughs> so one one really amazing thing that uh, that happens here is uh, so one of the things that he links uh, and talks about a little bit here is is uh, the Star Wars Prequel Appreciation Society, who are available at Star Wars a Prequel Appreciation Society dot wordpress dot com, um, uh, and this site essentially wrote um, like that piece like. That piece that we just read, they wrote that, but then he wrote it again with a whole bunch of vitriol. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at that. But it's like, it's like, uh, Big Bang Theory makes fun of the prequels. Oh God damn it! Big Bang Theory makes fun of the prequels. <laughs> oh jeez, they're eating it. So um, there is a piece in here uh, called A Stern Message for Not Ordinary in Games, the Protocol Titan AE Fan Bigot. What? <laughs> weird. It's weird how he has these sort of opinions about shit that he never actually even watches. But um, yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound like nerds at all. There's some nerd outrage to participate in. I don't care if I've seen it or not. <laughs> I got to get down <laughs> on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who will know if I'll get the opportunity again? Okay, well, let's so, see. What is the Steven Universe? I'll read you that too. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, cheapskates. Um, we are now going to Project Orion Two Interstellar Blogspot Com, and here's a <laughs> here is a pair of massive tits with blue nipples. Oh, on a male. <laughs> so he's he's definitely got a type. Yeah. Um, it's a sh- giant titted shirtless aliens who um, are being robbed. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, there's a, there's a yeah. caption for it. The caption says, "A shirtless male character of mine who has big breasts." Oh, yes. who has big breasts! And... Thank you for putting that in the caption. Oh, that's what those yeah. are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, between his arms straight aloft and his eye makeup, he looks kind of like something from a really weird Egyptian hieroglyphic. <laughs> uh, yeah, take us through this, please. Oh, very well. Okay, this is Frederick Galactico Impcus is Mister FTL. Hello, this is Project Orion 2's chief designer, and this post is about a crackpot whom I have written. His real name is Frederick Galactico Impcus, and he also refers to himself as Faster Than Light Freddy, since he adamantly insists on the idea of faster than light travel. Those who accept Albert Einstein's special relativity refer to the brat as Mr. FDL in an uncomplimentary fashion. He hates Einstein (laughs) can't... Calls. He hates Einstein. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can calls Albert a theoretical despot just for showing that FTL is impossible. What an asshole. <laughs> he then goes on to call everyone who knows that traveling faster than light is impossible Einsteiniacs and has a conspiracy Ooh. theory about a made up speed of light empire which he claims rules physics and astronomy with iron <laughs> fists. <laughs> Those motherfuckers are lying and getting me past. <laughs> <laughs> Go Mr. back F- to your Titan AE school. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'll take down those gravity Nazis. <laughs> Mr. FTL's elders are aggressively lenient? Yeah, those, it, <laughs> It doesn't. Re- oh, I'm gonna let you get away yeah. with this. <laughs> Those words don't really go well together. Please, sir. Oh, not, yeah. 
I'm going to give this one a pass, too. Oh, no, yeah. please, sir. I wish you wouldn't be fine with this. <laughs> they are aggressively lenient on him, meaning that they will defend his belief in FTL and instantly blow up at anyone who dares to teach their boy the anti-FTL equations. <laughs> <laughs> So they walk by a chalkboard that the, this guy hasn't noticed that says, like, FTL equals wrong, and then they're just kind of, like, standing in front of it, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's, it's like Nothing the anti, here. yeah, it's the anti-life equation, but FTL. His mom, Betty Impkus, threatens to kick <laughs> relativity supporters with her pointy shoes if they tell her son that it is impossible to travel faster than the speed of life. So is this a bio for the, for the, the man with the dog head that has giant blue tits is that is that is no this the there's a different bio for that oh good okay great yeah that's, he hasn't identified just your which, attention lemon. uh shirtless male character has big breasts here it could be the same <laughs> oh, person no oh sorry maybe it is that for that so it's, sorry he has two different i didn't realize these were different characters <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, it is for that specific dog-headed character okay, with breasts. Good. It's not for all of his dog-headed characters with breasts. Yeah, well, you would you would know they were different characters if you would take your eyes off the breasts. Duh. <laughs> okay, Mr. FTL's best friend is a very troubled borderline personality Sando Aqua Monster named Siberius Chuckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Got a gift for monikers. Who just very lenient on FTL boy because he feels far sorry for, for him from day one. The Impkus family runs a blatantly pro FTL film company called Echolands Entertainment, which they founded for their boy. Mr. FTL oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't give a shit about this speed of light thing. I'm just giving the people what they want. Yeah, the guys who did Airplane did a faster than light Christmas carol for them. And Kelsey Grammer yeah. in it. It's, it's taking uh, Vanity Publishing to the next level. <laughs> Mr. FTL is the arched enemy of a serious Sando Slayer. <laughs> Very bad named, posture. Very bad named, posture. <laughs> named Orion <laughs> McSagan. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Who is very vehement about hand wavy and wishful thinking, including the belief in FTL. There is also one Colo Claw fish in particular named Sim Colo Claw who literally vomits every time he watches an Echo Lance entertainment film and demands that Mr. That FDL should learn to understand the equations that show the speed of light is a cosmic <laughs> speed oh, limit. Why are you always watching those films and throwing up there, Colo Claw fish? I think, oh, I think I can't talk about it. <laughs> I think Sim Colo Claw is the self insert. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. FTL's best friend on land is a stealth in space wishful thinker named Sean Gorse. Well, I understood all of that. <laughs> These are amazing <laughs> names. Oh, would would you like to know more about the Echo Lance Entertainment movies? I, actually, uh, be, before before doing that, I want to. Yeah. Could you uh, just read the about me section on the on the right of the page? Oh, sure. Um, Project Orion 2's chief designer. I am the chief designer on a future interstellar space spacecraft dubbed Project Orion 2 ever since I first came up with the concept in the morning of Thursday, February 18th, 1999. That's when you became the chief designer? <laughs> when yeah, you thought about oh, yeah. it was when you became the chief designer? <laughs> I'm assuming there's other designers, too, that you were then the chief of, right? Well, yeah, like uh, Sean Gorse and Betty Imkis and Orion McSagan. <laughs> Project Orion One. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell me, tell uh, me Project about Orion these, uh... One. I thought uh, I thought about halfway through it, and then I gave up. <laughs> you just threw your hands up in the air like a giant titted dog monster. <laughs> well, that was that was how you got that was how yeah. you got all the funding for Project Orion Two was to make Project <laughs> Orion or to think about making Project Orion One. Yeah, it was just. Wait, tell me about okay. the, uh, Wait, the Echo sorry. Lance. What? <laughs> sorry, I so I clicked on the profile thing and I got like a list of interests. And one of the interests was Project Orion Two. I'm just like, well, let's see who else on Blogspot uh, shares these interests. Um, and there's three users. 
One of them is called Project Orion 2's chief designer. That makes sense. There's mm-hmm. yeah. Polo Cloth Fish Protector, who has their own profile. That name sounds <laughs> familiar. Bl- yeah. blogger. And also Lion King's number one defender. <laughs> Ooh, they're all they're all located in San Diego, so they can that's convenient. They can collaborate. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Bruce, what are what are Lion King number one's defenders? Lion King number one defenders' interests? Interests? Uh, <laughs> well, my interests are: I devote this blog to making friends with Lion King and protecting the world of Lion King from deep space threats. That's not what I asked you. I asked you what your interests. Were. Oh, sorry, my interests. Oh, apologies. <clears throat> the introduction was also good, though. That was the, the introduction. Yeah, uh, astronomy, Lion King, Project Riot Two, sleeping, peace. Keeping my bow tie untied at all times. Oh, well. Keeping it casual, you know. You're just a casual rebel. Yeah. No shirt, requ- no jacket required over here. <laughs> I've only seen yeah. two movies and one of them does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you don't... Anyway. Yeah, speaking um, of movies, Echolands Entertainment has several movies. Uh, one okay. of them is called FTL Res- Revolution. Another right. is Theoretical Tyranny, No FTL Allowed. Uh... God damn the, it! <laughs> Why? Yeah, uh, they've also they've also created Star Stealth Coup d'État, which is a catchy title. You'll and... pay for the whole seat. You'll need the whole seat. Also, <laughs> faster than light travel will not happen. <laughs> yeah. And of course, thermodynamic Martinets. No stealth allowed in space. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Every star system has its own Martinet just standing there wielding the laws of thermodynamics to prevent you from trying to sneak around. It would be funny if it weren't so true. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so uh, we're going to move on to... Jesus Christ, like, okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to learn some more about uh, Project Orion 2. Uh, we're going to go back to a page, a giant... Dog man with the tits is very large. <laughs> it's just like takes up the whole page. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so John Toast. Okay. Um, it is uh, Project Orion 2's thirteenth birthday. Oh, so, uh, would you like would you like to wish <laughs> Project Orion two a happy birthday? I sure will. If things okay. that don't exist can have birthdays. <laughs> Sure. I guess they can now. (laughs) All right. Happy 13th birthday, Project Orion 2. Saturday, February 18th, 2012 is the 13th birthday of Project Orion 2. Um, So it's what? 17 now? (laughs) Am I doing my math right? That is a a picture of a dodecahedron. Yep. A picture of a dodecahedron. Some kind of rocket where the bottom of it is oddly testicular. It's... It it does have a flared base. <laughs> it does. That's Perfect. A, that's a real Kerbal Space Program rocket ship if I can yeah. see one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Project this Orion 2's apprentice, a colo claw fish, which just looks like a badly uh, like a bad picture of a TV playing The Dark Crystal. I think. Yeah. yeah like, I think this is one of the fish from Naboo in Episode One. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. There's always, I recognize a, there's that always a bigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. anytime he has mentioned a nonsense animal, I have looked it up and it's an animal from Naboo. <laughs> so, Interesting. Didn't he say earlier that he doesn't like Star Wars? <laughs> Oh, he was being he was being coy yeah. then. Now we know okay. what's going on. He's so he, more of a Star yeah. Trek fan, you see. Yeah, but yeah, he's I'll... a he's a Star Wars fan ally. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. A, he's a, he is a defender of the prequel fans. Yeah. He's a big yeah. fan of the half of the first Star Wars movie that took place on Naboo. <laughs> okay. Right. Makes sense. And the parts anyway. w- the parts where all the Gungans had gigantic breasts. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, just to, to point out the right, our our, uh, our model it appears again, but it actually has uh, something closer to a name. It says Serious Breast Man. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he's now wearing a bow tie that is untied. <laughs> Right, yeah. and that's serious as in the star serious breast yeah, yeah, yeah. man, what not a, serious what a as in rogue. <laughs> not serious as in he is serious about breasts. Correct. Anyway, anyway. Hello. This Hello. is Project Orion 2's chief designer, Timothy, and I have something that I want to tell you on this special day to me. 13 years ago in the morning of Thursday, February 12th, 18th rather, 1999, I came up with my most prized interstellar brainchild dubbed Project Orion 2. 
after realizing that the original Project Orion was defunct by a hearing from someone who read about it. <laughs> well, that's all it took. <laughs> that's all it took. Hey, dude, this is fucking nutty. Oh, okay. I'll get it's it right wrecked. next time. <laughs> if I write it down, it blinks out of existence. Oh. Project Orion was a real thing. Yeah, apparently. it was a NASA okay. project. All right. And then God, it's funnier about if it, it wasn't. Cut that out. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the, the, it, well, it saves the fans from going, mm, excuse me. Mm. <laughs> oh, they'll do Go that on. anyway. <laughs> the dodecahedron is a... Okay, I commemorate February 18th as the birthday of my vision. Okay. The dodecahedron is the symbol that I have adopted for Project Orion 2. Project Orion 2's sexy alien apprentice is the Colo Claw Fish, uh-huh. as in the Colo Claw Fish in Project Orion 2 Unity. So he wants to he wants to fuck the CGI monster from Hey uh, Matt, uh, Timothy, oh, whatever your name is, uh, don't uh. want to fuck crabs. Like don't do that. <laughs> like try not to want to fuck crabs. Yeah. I don't know. I think you're. I think you're fighting a losing battle, Lemon, because there's a picture of a clay crab on the but right, I, yeah. right but uh, honestly, sidebar. I'm going over to the, his side. I kind of want to fuck a crab now. But, crab, I, but I want sex and crabs right to be right associated now. negatively in a very different way now. <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty blurry, but it looks like it's sort of seductively like sticking his tongue out at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy thirteenth birthday, Project Orion Two. I I think this is a poem. Yeah, yeah, so. it looks like yeah, a- yeah, 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 yeah. The lines get longer on every line break. So Why yeah. does Therefore every poem, poem do so that? It's, a, it's, it's an internet poem. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. To my most prized brainchild. Uh, I wish your was... most prized what? To my most prized brainchild. Bra- oh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. To my most prized brainchild. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you a stellar 13th birthday. You are the very reason that I go to college. Okay. <laughs> Studying to be an aerospace engineer. We need a lot you of You provide true filmmaking. hope to me and everything that I stand for. You foiled the Dredge Queen's plot to destroy Earth with logic. Wow, good job. <laughs> Challenge the Earth to a game of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> you are so united with Colo Clawfish as your apprentice in an Orion 2 Unity. Okay. Mm-hmm. You are like a bright, lonely spark in a sea of jet black darkness. These right. Japanese corporate anthems are really weird. <laughs> <laughs> Colo Clawfish. <laughs> Project Orion 2. I am forever grateful for conceiving you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, well, now you're just God. congratulating yourself. <laughs> You signal the end of the military-industrial complex and capitalism. Wow, all right. Both of them? A rocket ship does that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. forget, are rocket ships really cheap to make? Yeah. <laughs> Raytheon's going to see the rocket ship and be like, ah, oh, the jig is up. <laughs> welcome to the welcome to the Communist Party. You'll need two things. One is uh, Karl Marx's manifesto, and uh, two is uh, Project Orion Two. <laughs> Cheese it, bankers! We'll oh. meet back at the hideout and figure out a new plan. Oh, this is how we get fully automated luxury gay space communism. <laughs> That's where it comes from. You adapt to reality checks since you were born from reality checks to begin with. Sure. This, well, keep in mind, this is a time. poem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You are by far one of the most, if not the most flexible interstellar project so far conceived. Oh my god. Flexible because there's not really a plan. (laughs) You will promote international cooperation and end nationalism and national pride. You bear my very best and the very best of other kin red luminaries of reason. Beautiful. Absolutely absolutely beautiful. (laughs) It's very moving. Uh, we're going to go to a different site now, uh, and it is called I Hate Sando Aqua Monsters. Uh, here is a different photo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't, don't we all? Yeah, yeah. You're, oh, wow. You're so brave coming out and saying you hate Sando Aqua Monsters. I've <laughs> always hated. I am on the record as hating Sando Aqua Monsters. But all of his characters so far have been Sando Aqua Monsters. <laughs> hey, always have they? Hated them. Hey, Lemon. Yes. Can I read the byline to the website? That would be great. The, the byline is, crushing, crushing a Christophrenia in the metaphor of science fiction, as well as proving that Sando Aqua Monsters should not have been imagined. Wow. Is that like, is that like 
Chris, like Christian and schizophrenia mashup? Is that what that word was? I think it's an unsuccessful rock opera. Oh no! <laughs> okay. okay. No, Frank West. I, 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 I'm very ashamed at at you and your interpretation of this. His creations are not Sando Aqua Monsters. His creations are Colo Cloth Fish. The Sando Aqua Monster was the bigger fish that ate the Colo Cloth Fish. <laughs> Oh, it is it? Santa Menace. <laughs> wow, you are so he's you are, like you are he's, working overtime on the. Star I'm gonna wow. have to call today. bullshit on that one, Boots, because if you look at the description for Sand Eye Whitlash, <laughs> the one who was holding up the signs, you'll see that it's a cross between Jar Jar Binks and a Sando Aqua Monster. <laughs> I did not Get realize. Fucking destroyed, Boots. Yeah. You're so fucking wrong. He so he was like laser focused, <laughs> not just on the prequels, but on a specific creature that appears yeah. for three seconds in one of the prequel movies. Is, is yeah. this Jar Jar yeah. breasted Aquaman is best friends with my James Tiberius Kirk homage time travel <laughs> protagonist Trenton Kirkson. This needs such the almanac. I liked that for a second there. We became the website we were reading. That was pretty. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> I, I was I was watching Frank West and Boots fall down this rabbit hole <laughs> and land on a pair of giant dog tits. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the only conclusion I can come to is that he really wants to hate fuck the Sando Aqua Monster. Well. <laughs> yes. While screaming in its ear, FTL is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's Cloverfield versus Sando Aqua Monster moving the goalposts. Now, I will talk about a cheating tactic known as moving the goalposts. Hey, when you're talking about moving the goalposts, you should, what is that a, their picture of underneath you saying moving the goalposts? Literally moving a goalpost. Thank it's, you. It's a bunch of soccer guys moving a soccer goal. <laughs> yeah, moving the goalposts. <laughs> okay, definition, an unfair cheating tactic in which somebody uh, suddenly changes the original standards of proof uh, once their opponent has met them. You, this, is, this is one of those few times when Webster's defines would actually be better. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is a desperate means of claiming victory when, he, when one has clearly lost the debate. This is not only illogical, this is cheating. Okay. Sando wankers, when confronted oh. with the overwhelming evidence that their mascot is guaranteed to be beaten in fights with Godzilla or the Cloverfield Beast, create fantasies about the Sando Aqua Monster becoming a Jedi Knight. And one good example is this Star Wars Artist Guild, or swag, image by Sando fangirl known as Tussie. Okay. How many there's more than people are there? I was going to say there's more than one of you. The word Tussie specifically. I'm just talking about Tussie right now. Oh. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to digress into a bunch of different shit. On a side anyway. note. On a side note. How happy do you think the Star Wars Artist Guild was? Uh, was when they figured out what their names did for, like yeah. the, the acronym for yeah. their name. I think it was pretty it, good. Day. I think it took them three years to find out. <laughs> <laughs> a Sando lover <laughs> said to have a fight between Godzilla and the Jedi Master Sando pictured above to have a clash uh, of the use of force versus the force. Mm. Unfortunately for these losers, Godzilla will still beat the Sando Aqua Jedi in a fight since his fiery breath is much wider than the Sando Jedi's lightsaber. The lightsaber would only block a fraction of Godzilla's breath, but the rest is free to bypass his lightsaber and burn up the Sando. Oh my god, we're, we're at a middle school sleepover. <laughs> no, uh. Yeah. Correction. Plus, everybody knows Godzilla has an I saw a Mary met pack, so he's immune to the force. Duh. A middle school sleepover that this this person's mom is going to pick them up in in about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He needs to go home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that lightsaber would only block a fraction of Godzilla's breath, where the rest is free to bypass the lightsaber and burn up the sando. And the Jedi mind trick would be useless against Godzilla, because Godzilla's too strong-minded! <laughs> you know, oh, that's, the one character that's trait why. about Godzilla. When you think Godzilla, you think, oh, that strong-minded thing. <laughs> it's, it's very obvious that Godzilla is making informed decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so, the winner, as it turned out, would be Godzilla. No contest. The Sando Jedi was a goalpost move against the fact that the Cloverfield Beast would shred the Sando in a fight. Cloverfield will still win the fight against the Jedi Master Sando. The massive 
long frontal arms can easily reach out and grab Sando, Aqua Jedi, and the arm holding the lightsaber and get out of the Sando's hand and perhaps use it against the Sando Jedi. <laughs> Literally, it's a lightsaber fight between two ugly CG monsters. <laughs> Uh, in my previous post, I give reasons why the Cloverfield Beast would defeat the Sando Aqua Monster, and the winner is my flagship Leviathan from Cloverfield. Hands down! Here are some terrible DeviantArt drawings. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> Boots, what did you just find on... What did you just find on Twitter? Oh, I found, uh, uh, its Twitter handle is Rational Orion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it, is, it says, I have made the shocking discovery of an anti-Avatar smear campaign by fans of the Alien and Predator franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, is, it is like a like a shitty draw, a shitty MS Paint he, drawing. He thinks of, everything of is predator, like a political movement. <laughs> of, <laughs> of, a, of a predator bisecting an Avatar person and saying, Avatar sex. <laughs> Burn. Um... <laughs> He stopped tweeting uh, July 7th, 2015. I wonder what happened. <laughs> uh, moving on. Man, there are so many different blogspot URLs we're visiting. This is so exciting. Um, <laughs> Isfahan. Yes. Uh, would you tell me the tragedy of Cranky Krabby? I sure will. Okay. <laughs> All right, gather around, folks. I have a sad, sad story to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Ever since Cranky Krabby and Lobo Lobsterito were plankton larvae of their species, they were best friends. We're like sitting around a campfire roasting marshmallows, you know. When Cranky and Lobo were growing up, a chef from a seaside seafood restaurant on a pier started to pursue them. Cranky and Lobo had an underwater version of a car in which they evaded that chef. Lobo shouted, Cranky, the chef is getting closer. Lock the door. Cranky locked the door, but the chef had a means to bust into the sea car, and he grabbed both Lobo and Cranky and taped their claws. The chef laughed. You two are coming with me to my restaurant on the pier, where I will enjoy every second of cooking you. Cranky were placed in a tank, and were both scared. Cranky said, Lobo, if one or both of us escape, We will turn into breathtaking obsessive compulsive disorder to make sure the chef crisis never happens again. Is that what is that? I know know that that must be satire, but what is it satire of? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I think that's what sounds if you slow it down. (laughs) (laughs) Lobo said, I agree, but the chances of both of us escaping are not promising. It is more likely that just one of us will escape. And you are the most likely to escape. Oh my god, this is tough. Then the chef can't... That's what the chef looks like. That's why I had that voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the chef looks like the guy on the pizza box. Uh, then the chef came and picked up both Cranky and Lobo out of the tank and said, Today is going to be glorious because I will enjoy the thrill of your doom. Cranky rubbed his taped claws against anything that could catch the tape on in order to remove it. The chef decided to cook Lobo first. As the chef placed Lobo into a boiling pot, Cranky pinched the chef in an effort to save himself and Lobo. Cranky then ran away, but Lobo was not so lucky. The chef sealed Lobo's fate and placed him in the boiling pot and then went to get first aid since Cranky drew blood. This is this is not the sort of violence I was prepared for. Like like I, I don't like I don't like movies where lobsters are in pots. <laughs> That's the one thing I don't like about this movie is I don't like <laughs> movies where lobsters are in pots. Well, why in the world did you watch Lobsters Boiled Alive in Pots, the movie? Because <laughs> I had to logically prove why it's a bad movie. Yeah, yeah. okay. I thought it was a metaphor. <laughs> and then when he drew blood, okay. Cranky then made his way to the exit and barely escaped before the chef went back to work and plopped into the sea below. The chef plopped into the, the sea below. <laughs> that, now? Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> and he plopped into the sea. Just <laughs> oof. Following the chef trauma, Cranky Krabby declared that he would be obsessive compulsive <laughs> and have OCD as a security blanket. <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> because if there's one thing people with OCD what? have, it's security. Yeah. A security blanket that he washed over and over and over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> 
And then after touching each easier, wall of his house. Know? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> then some mysterious aliens on a survey mission to Earth crossed paths with Cranky Krabby and took him in their spacecraft. Oh, okay. The aliens okay. had sympathy for Cranky and wanted to take him to what would be a safer place for him. Cranky was delivered to a watery planet within a hundred light years from Earth. There, he found a new best friend who was a Sando Aqua monster <laughs> named Siberius oh Chakan. Oh, maybe that's oh a self insert. Yeah. Oh my! Siberius <laughs> is notorious for feeding others obsessive compulsive disorder. He's an enabler. Mm-hmm. And here's a picture from a episode one coloring book, I guess. Yep. Yeah. There's a, there's a maze. You can oh yeah, see it's a maze. Yeah. The page. <laughs> Siberius said, Hello there, little fellow. I am Siberius Chakan. I am a Sando Aqua monster who defends OCD. <laughs> I feel compelled for some reason to share that detail about myself to you. <laughs> Cranky replied, oh. hmm? No, I, I, do okay. you think you could tell me a little bit about the straw man fallacy? Okay. Uh, two more paragraphs. Mm-hmm. And then Cranky said, Cairo, you just want to make anyone who happens to love their OCD as miserable as possible just to make yourself feel good. You are a button pusher who likes to think of himself as cool. You are just teasing me, so OCD must be preserved. (laughs) Wow. So so much political intrigue. Cairo said, I do smell a logical fallacy. It is called a straw man fallacy. A straw man fallacy (laughs) is an informal logical fallacy that distorts an opponent's position. And I feel like he's reading this from a paper (laughs) Uh, that distorts an opponent's position and later claims to heroically defeat their opponent in a debate. You totally distorted my argument and what you said about me has no basis in reality. The reason I want others to get over their obsessive compulsive disorder is so they can lighten up and enjoy life like I do. It makes me sad to see others constantly anxious and paranoid. Cranky began to lose control. He got so mad he started picking up and moving (laughs) goalposts. This is what I do to cope. (laughs) Cranky shouted, Cairo, obsessive compulsive disorder is by far the best security blanket ever. I need my precious OCD vitals so I do not end up in another horrible situation like that nasty chef again. If you don't believe me and keep trying to deprive me of my OCD essentials, I will summon Siberius Chakan, who is who is <laughs> who is handsome and and smart. Uh, you know that's not in there. And he will use Clevy. You cut you in half and eat you for lunch. <laughs> Cairo replied, "Cranky, I will not give in to your force argument. A force argument argumentum oh, ad vacuum <laughs> is an informal logical like fallacy." Star Wars movie where all that happens is the characters argue about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually was the plot of episode two. (laughs) This is what happens when you have a sock puppet, but there isn't even a sock on your hand. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Unpleasant. I'm explaining the force argument. Uh, It's illogical because threats do not necessarily prove the conclusion to be correct. By threatening to have Siberius cut me in two, you are seriously losing control. I will still keep telling you to get treatment for and to get rid of you OCD. Cranky then stormed out and headed back to Siberius. Uh, can you skip down just a tiny little bit and tell me what happened when Cairo and Timothy exited the cave? Timothy, okay. that's a name I've seen before. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. We're going to uh, skip a few more paragraphs of the author just looking you in the face and telling you things. and say, <laughs> yeah, that's true. As Cairo and Timothy exited the cave, Siberius laughed. Girly eel, you think that the Punite is going to protect you from me? Ha 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 ha. You know what? Shitty actors make decisions. <laughs> this is how you're going to laugh in this story. <laughs> Timothy said, Siberius Chikan. I will protect Cairo Seymour from you in the style of the eagle and the beetle. I am like the beetle, and you are my eagle. Timothy discharged 11 liters of strong sander repellent <laughs> at Siberius. I'm sure the label on it said sander repellent. Yeah, yeah. So he would become so uncomfortable that he left. Cairo said, 
What you just discharged was an excellent defense. You just sent Siberius packing. <laughs> yes, Thank you know. for protecting you, me. You, you opened up that 11 liter bottle. <laughs> Let me explain what happened in the sense that came just before this one. Yeah. I just keep expecting Cairo to start going, what isn't an excellent defense is argument ad absurdium. Oh, <laughs> shit. <Ad> absurdium. <laughs> oh, shit. I almost accidentally showed something. Let me tell you about it instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's important when you're telling a piece of fiction, always follow the rule, tell and then tell and then yeah. tell. And do not ever right. show. Tell and then tell about the telling. <laughs> You prove Severius wrong about you and foil Cranky Krabby's force argument. <laughs> to reiterate, a force argument is... No. <laughs> <laughs> Cranky was still in the area, despite Severius making a run for it. Timothy said, I see a distraught crab. Cairo, Cairo relied. The disturbed crab that you are referring to is Cranky Krabby, who threatened me in order to keep his obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> oh my god! That's a pretty good summation. Oh <laughs> Cranky, you are coming with me. Cairo Dead picked up Cranky, and Cranky screamed, Let me go, you flashy eel. Your naked eel body offends me. You have no arms to stick into the air. <laughs> Cairo replied, Cranky, <laughs> you need to get control, and you will see a glorious stern psychiatrist who will crack down on your OCD and treat it. <laughs> and I guarantee fucking to you, at some point, uh, our, our author was told by a psychiatrist that he has OCD. Um, <laughs> yep. Kyra, I don't know why you'd assume that this is autobiographical. This dude thought. would have loved The Godfather 3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, nobody tell him. <laughs> Cairo, Cranky, and Timothy ascended to the starship that was waiting to take them into deep space. Once on board, Cairo got cozy and covered up his sexy eel body with his blanket before the ship took off. Yeah. Cranky made a scene um, since he knew he could no longer threaten Cairo with Sando Aqua Monsters. Yeah! As, as the Bussard Ramjet accelerated... Cairo fell fast asleep and began to hibernate. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Man, um, they'll give they'll give anybody they'll give anybody a new Barry Award these days. Yeah. <laughs> I had completely forgotten that Krabby was the main character at the beginning of this story. <laughs> um uh, okay, so, uh, so, uh, we need to decide, uh, which, how, how can we can end this, and we can end this one of two ways. We can have the happy ending, right? Ooh, the happy $20 ending extra. is the <laughs> section called <laughs> Orion 2 Victory, or we can have the tragic ending, and that's called Serious Arrests Mr. FTL. Boots. Hmm. Wait, isn't that also the happy ending? I thought Mr. FTL was the bad guy. Uh, well, yeah, but I felt for Mr. FTL. Like, he was one oh, of okay. those villains that I love to hate, you know? Right, oh, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. I kind of want to see what this dude thinks of victory in building his nuclear-powered spacecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the ideal outcome for him? <laughs> All right, so, I'm, pretty so sure, I'm pretty sure the actual goal point of building the ship, I feel like he probably didn't pull that one off. <laughs> Well, it's going to end capitalism. <laughs> like Mr. Robot. Um, Boots, uh, what are we doing here? Oh, uh, we're doing the victory. Okay. Oh, the Orion 2 victory. Great. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. New, new URL. Uh, we're now going to uh, Project Orion II DeviantArts.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> On Saturday, June 16th, 2012, I finally achieved my long sought after psychological objective with regards to the X Wings from Star Wars after all these years since I had first had the goal early in 1999. Okay. I am a member of the San Diego Astronomy Association, SDAA, that uses a Tierra del Sol TDS observatory, which I went to multiple times. Most recently going on Saturday, June 16th, 2012, and leaving on Sunday, June 17th, 2012. My goal was just to have... Was, mm, my goal was to have just Project Orion 2 and no X-Wings out of the two when going camping. <laughs> which was in the style of my foster brother's warning in late 1993 and early 1994 when they started making Star Trek and Star Wars Micro Machines. <laughs> oh, uh oh, uh oh! Here we go. <laughs> I can feel myself on the precipice right now. 
I was warned then to stay away from Star Wars and just do Star Trek, but sadly, I did not listen. You don't want any of this shit, do we? You get out of here right now! Yeah, it created a whole host of behavioral problems galore. Behavioral, mm. sorry. I'll bet that word spelled correctly, but I'm Canadian. That's fine. That's fine. Starting on Sunday, June 17th, 2012, I am in self-exile from Star Wars, probably to never return. No. But I will do deviations of Cloverfield versus Sando Aqua Monsters, starting oh. with a photo of 1 oh, to 1,000 scale yeah. Sculpey miniatures of the Cloverfield Beast and the Sando Sea Monster, and later an Adobe Photoshop image. And they're all going to have huge tits. Sorry, sorry an I... Adobe Photoshop image. Right. So I'm taking a break from Star Wars, except I'm doing this thing from Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm a big Star Wars fan art, but other than that, mm -hmm. no Star Wars fandom. Yeah. So clearly, we, we're... Just to point out, we're more than halfway through the victory of the Orion 2. Yeah. <laughs> I should have had the Orion 2 victory on Saturday, March 13th, 1999, when I was in Pisgah's crater with a Boy Scout troop known as the Hawk Patrol but did not because my Orion 2 was taken from me except for what they used to call autism time in an attempt to shove Star Wars down my throat and my indecision. And this created an aftermath that took me many years to undo. Had I been able to achieve Orion 2 victory on Saturday, March 13th, 1999, I would have started my self-exile from Star Wars on Sunday, March 14th, 1999. If that were the case, which sadly it was not, I would never, ever have seen the Star Wars prequels or nay sources oh on the Star Wars God. prequels since uh. this would have been more than two months before the opening of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And that would have been a victory. Mm -hmm. But I still would have come up with my Seymour Dawson Peel Peace... Hmm, Seymour Dawson Peace Eel in another way. Oh, thank God! <laughs> and then he, then he kicks back Victory. and opens up his book of Robert Frost poetry. <laughs> Two paths diverged. <laughs> this guy would be really good at writing clickbait. Like he's like so good at <laughs> like, that. That is that did not describe what happened in that text. <laughs> All right, uh, and, and just just uh, just so that we have some some sort of something here, something, something, something. Isfahan, mm -hmm. um, tell me about the time that Sirius arrested Mr. FTL. Okay. Mr. FTL threatened one of the Cola Claw residents living at the Ionian Cola housing vault complex where Sirius Sagan works as head of protection. Sim Cola wanted to teach FTL boy the formulas, but FTL brat refused to face the equations and instead threatened to have his Sando aqua friend Samantha Sando turn Sim to milk. This mm -hmm. would create a dire situation mm -hmm. which Sirius had to use a grenade harpoon and kill Samantha. Unlike most marauding Sando aqua monsters, Samantha would not be deterred by limefields or electroshock on the vault hatches because she had a friend counting on her. Samantha was slain, and Sirius sub subsequently arrested Mr. FTL for the crime with threatening a cold clawfish, Mr. S FTL ended up in a timeout trash can. <laughs> Dateline, Star Wars. <laughs> I was going for the Francis E. Deck reading. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like it like an old newsreel to me. <laughs> Like any whoever's editing this, you please put like the uh, old like newsreel footage music under that. that <laughs> you sit in the timeline timeout trash can, young man. Uh, so I imagine the timeout plus, oh trash God, can you... being dumped on his head like in Bill and Ted. <laughs> so uh, F plus, what did we learn from any of this? I I, I feel like I lost knowledge. I just have more <laughs> questions. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> this is this is. I mean, it's crazy, but it's like accessible crazy. It's you can you can see that everything has an internal logic for him. But can yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Because then he'll argue against it. He'll talk about how much he loves X thing, and then on like a different blog, well, he'll be like, I "That's hate how that he thing. frames all of his assertions." Is he's having an argument with nobody who has ever existed? And so, like, when <laughs> I can't tell which of these are the things he's the viewpoints he's promoting, and which of them are like the fictional characters. <laughs> going against the few points he's promoting because nobody else in the world gives a shit so I have no contact. I, th I think he lives in the moment. Yeah. Hey, there is one guy who left a comment on one of these blog posts, okay? 
On, oh, well. <laughs> uh, when we had about uh, the Cloverfield monster, there was one dude who showed up in 2015 and agreed that Godzilla would devour the Sando Aqua monster. <laughs> well, if, you, if you look at his Twitter, someone agreed with him on StarDestroyer.net, and he liked it so hard that he just made like an image macro of the person's quote on like a cloud background where he basically says, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it framed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, this was sort of this this weird. I mean, because in a lot of these uh, in a lot of these cases, we've had situations where um, you know we've sort of like pontificated about like you know you went through your life, you had a boner about this thing, and then you based your life on it. But like this guy, this guy had that awakening no less than a dozen times in his life because he was like, oh, Carl Sagan, oh, faster than light travel, oh, this mm-hmm. weird specific character in Star, in Star Wars. Like, like this happens so many times, and I don't know how... Do you think he can internally figure out how to be a fan of all those things at the same time? As it goes along, he just kind of folds it into his existing uh, brain cannon, like... That is, yeah, yeah cause, it's cause really telling that he thinks of a... himself as primarily a Star Trek fan and barely mentions it because he's so obsessed with Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, and like, and like, if this guy just wants to, like, you know, have uh, rational conversations with people on the internet, like, are these the only subjects that he's found to do that about? Because it feels like he's got a forest for the trees problem. Here. Well, they're the only things he cares about. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, and the only thing that we care about is you giving us ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. This is the best commercial for the website yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> Can I just say one very quick thing? So yes. you know how all of his characters are holding up their hands and have exposed breasts? Yeah. Oh so my god, I'm... What? The, <laughs> yes? Well, so apparently the reason that is is because he's giving homage to breast snot bombs. <laughs> A protest <laughs> movement that like hasn't existed for several years. What wow. the hell? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't... That was, I don't know what to tell you. It was a protest. It was a protest movement in the seventies. What yeah. the fuck, man? Man, this subject. This subject has so many deep cuts. It's gonna die from blood loss. Yeah. <laughs> like this episode is gonna be pooled on the floor at the end. And I also, I also super, super love that he has a section in the sidebar called Atheist Links, and the first link is Cloverfield Five. <laughs> 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 well, what sort of god would make the Cloverfield monster? <laughs> <laughs>